What's up, YouTube? It's uh, Vincent here, and I'm going to be doing my answer video. Um, now, I already tried to do this video twice. First time, uh, I did it, and I was like 22 minutes in, and all of a sudden, the camera cut out, and I was like, all right, I'll just do a part two. But it deleted the file for some weird reason, so I just tested my camera to make sure it doesn't happen. We should be fine. Second time, I was like, okay. The same day, keep in mind, I was like, fuck. I was like, okay, well... I'll just, um, uh, do it on this new YouTube capture app I have. Yay, you know, right? That'd be cool. Let's get a little centered. There we go. Well, I uploaded the video. It had no sound. So I'm like, yeah, another day, right? So that was like three days ago. and kind of sucks. But here I am. I'm doing it now. Uh, we're going to have your questions. Um, you guys asked some good questions, and I'm excited to get to them. And I have my iPod here to answer the questions off of, and I also have the iPod just to, um, kind of get, like, to think of things quick, because, like, you know, certain questions involve, like, it, it's just going to help me out. So I can look stuff up in my own personal, um, music library, so I can, if I forget something, you know, whatever, it happens. I listen to a lot of music, so it happens. So, I'm going to cut all the bullshit, and we're just going to get right to it. Thank you all very much for the questions, and let's go. So... Uh, first question is, comes from the Strong Boys, 19. Thanks, man, I appreciate it. This dude does awesome reviews. If you haven't seen him, check him out. And he asks, what is your all-time favorite album, and which bands got you into music from each genre? Now, I'm just going to say it now. First question, I can't do it. I, I mean, it's... What happened to my iPod? That's weird. Alright, anyway. Uh, <laughs> sorry. The, um... It's just not possible. I mean, I listen to so much different types of music where trying to pick any one album is just impossible for me, so I'm not gonna lie, I can't do that one. Um... What I can do, however, is the, uh, the other question, which is, what bands got you into each genre of music? And that's a really, really cool question. Um, so, let me just go down the list here. Uh, Black Flag got me into punk. Uh, Cannibal Corpse got me into death metal. Uh, Melvin's got me into sludge and uh, doom metal. And to an extension, stoner metal. Uh, uh, Smashing Pumpkins got me into Dream Pop and Shoegaze, you know, that whole sort of sub-genre of stuff, which I love. Uh, Howlin' Wolf got me into the blues. Uh, uh, Napalm Death got me into Grindcore, which I'm not a huge fan of Grindcore, not because I don't like it, obviously, because I just said I do. But I'm just, I don't know that many albums, um, currently, um, but I plan on it, you know, I, I definitely plan on it. Uh... Queen got me an improvisational rock, you know, like Grateful Dead, um, which I love and I do plan on reviewing. And oh, right now, I said I, I love Grateful Dead. Right now, a bunch of people were either like, yeah, and some are like, because, you know, Grateful Dead is such a, like, a, such a polarizing band. Some people love them, some people hate them. It's just the way it is. Um, uh, let's see here. Sleep got me further in the storm metal. Slayer got me into thrash metal. Pink Floyd got me into, like, progressive and space rock. Hawkwind got me into Space Rock. Um, Black Moth Super Wambo got me into uh, electronic music. Uh, Jimi Hendrix got me into more psychedelic music. Um, Suicidal Tendencies got me into the whole crossover thing. Um, we could just do this forever, I mean. Um, I think that should be it. Vava Shankar got me into Indian music, which I haven't listened to that much, but I really like it. Uh, and the Flaming Lips, I'd say, just got me into more experimental music. Um, so, yeah. Thank you for the question, man. I'm sorry I couldn't answer the first one. It's just too hard. Uh, next, we have... Uh, what is your favorite Melvin's album? Okay, I promise this is going to be the last question that I can't answer. Um, 
I love everything that Melvin... Oh, I'm sorry. That question came uh, from Oscar Giancarlo, or Giancarlo. Thanks for the question, man. Um, and Melvin's pretty much everything they did from 87 to 95, I think, is when Stoner Witch came out. Pretty much good report statements to Stoner 5. Stoner 5. Stoner Witch, I love. I, I mean, it's it's fucking awesome. And, you know, it, it's funny because I don't think they've ever made a bad album, the Melvins. I just, that, that era, you know, late 80s to, to mid 90s, is just my favorite era of that band. Just so many classic good albums. But I have to say, if I were to make just a highlight of, like, my favorites. Ozma, underrated as fuck album, it's amazing. Bullhead, come on. Lysol got me into a whole different style of metal and heavy music. I think Melvins are too unique to just say metal or punk or whatever. And then, uh, Stoner Witch. I like Houdini. To be honest, I always think Houdini's a little overrated. I think, and it's not just because it's the most popular, because I don't even think it is at this point. But, it has amazing songs on it. Honey Bucket, Hag Me, Hooch, which funny enough, they all start with H. And more than just those, right? Um, t you know, good shit. But Stoner Witch, I just, I like the more experimental side of Stoner Witch. Houdini, the experimental songs, in my opinion, are, I just don't enjoy them. They're not bad. I just don't enjoy them as much, whereas, like, Sneak Sheevil and, like, Lividity and all these weird, like, Magic Pig Detective, all these really weird songs on Stoner Witch, I think just go over better, and it's mixed with the Melvin's heaviness and weirdness, so I... I, I like that album more, but pretty much, yeah, Ozma, Bullhead, Lysol, and uh, Stone of Witch. I love all those albums. So sorry, I couldn't pick one. Thank you very much for the question. I appreciate it. Uh, okay. This comes from Peter Doinov. I hope I pronounced it right. I'm, I'm going to butcher a lot of your names. I apologize. If you wrote your real names, anyway. Uh, and he asks, do you listen to any extreme genre of metal? Why? Who's your favorite YouTube reviewer? And, uh, what's your favorite horror movie? Now, I, lo I love those questions. Now, uh, Peter, if you are new to my channel, you have not seen any extreme metal reviews because I haven't, you know, reviewed it in a while. Check out my old videos. I reviewed a lot of extreme metal. I'm a huge fan of it. I haven't been listening to it as much as of late just because I haven't had a taste for it lately. At this point, I'm, I'm really listening to a lot of different types of music. I still love metal. I always will, but, um... You know, extreme metal in particular, I haven't really been listening to it. Um, but do I listen to it? Yes. Why? Extreme metal is one of those things where it's kind of hard to explain. There's something about metal in general, or just all aggressive music, but because we're talking about extreme metal, that gets your, kind of like your blood pumping, you know. It is a genre that kind of is boundaryless. And there's so many different forms of extreme metal, whether it be all the different forms of death metal, all the different forms of, like, wheel thread, you know, whatever whatever you're into, there's always some boundary to push. You know what I mean? I, I find that a very unique and appealing part of uh, the style. Now, also, there's this brutality in extreme metal that you just can't get anywhere else, and it's a very um, therapeutic kind of thing, I mean, there's nothing better than being in a room, of, of, I went to go see Cannibal Corpse, um, ah, uh, June 4th, and there's, n oh, actually, I saw, uh, <laughs> there's a great fucking lineup, dude, it was so sick, I saw Maguda Grind, they were awesome, um, uh, uh, Immolation, awesome, Napalm Death, come on, awesome, and then Cannibal Corpse, which, dude, it was so awesome, because I love Cannibal Corpse, you know? And sorry I'm rambling, but I just have to tell you guys this. I don't think I ever told you this. And, um, it was so cool to see corpse guns like this close to my face. And I was, like, yelling, and I stuck the thumbs up to Alex Webster. And he was like, Daddy okay, he stuck thumbs up. It was awesome. And when I woke up, my lower back to my neck felt like someone just just stepped on it over and over and over again. Because I was headbanging so much, and my neck was in pain. But it was worth it. That brings me back to the point. I apologize. There's nothing funner than a bunch of guys and girls, because there were some girls, there were some good looking ones too, in a, a room just headbanging. 
and just the, the loudness, you, you, like, you feel it, you know. And th that is what extreme metal is to me. It's a, a, a feeling thing. It's this force that kind of just like envelops you, you know. You just you feel it, you know, and it's amazing. So that's why I listen to extreme metal. Uh, second question was, well, who's your favorite YouTube reviewer? And I don't have one YouTube reviewer that I love. I love multiple. Solo about music. He doesn't review albums anymore, but he does really good songs. Um, but his reviews pretty much made me want to review. That's just, that's, that's it. His reviews made me want to review, you know. Uh, and I got a lot of my style from him. I, you know, the more laid back, unedited videos is, I got that sort of from, I shouldn't say I got it from him because I probably would have done that anyway, but he made me feel good about doing it. Like, well, he doesn't edit, and so why the fuck do I need to? Three Creation slash 60 Minute Wipeout. Great guy. He comments on a lot of my videos. Just a real nice, open-minded, kind dude. Awesome guy. Amazing reviews. Um... Main Slave, my man. Uh, Main Slave is one of my best friends here on YouTube. He's an amazing guy. And although his channel is not all reviews, which I love his reviews, but I gotta say, I really like his other videos, maybe even a little bit more. Because there's tons of YouTube reviewers on YouTube, but there's not another Maiden Slave on YouTube. You know, Main Slave, he just does a lot of different things. I love the topic vomits. I love, you know, it's garbage. I love just his random vlogs about things, and I know he doesn't like to call them vlogs. Just like, I don't really like to call my stuff vlogs, but I kind of have to because that's what it is. But he's just an awesome guy and an awesome reviewer. Um, Needle Drop. I mean, come on, it's the Needle Drop. Um, Cover Killer Nation. Best metal reviewer, probably. Um, and a bunch of others I probably can't think of. So, yeah. I love a bunch. I can't just pick one, but they are my, you know, my favorites. And the third one was, yeah. Uh, what's your favorite horror movie? Evil Dead. Uh, I'm not really a big horror movie fan, and it's not because I don't like them, and I think I wouldn't like them. I just haven't really watched that many, and I think it has to do a lot the way that recent horror movies are. Recent horror movies suck, it's just all the same shit over and over and over again. There's, it's either remakes or whatever. Um, but Evil Dead, the reason I love Evil Dead is because there's one thing I love, it's cheesiness. There's something so cool about cheese when it comes to like horror movies and gore because it feeds that like really like barbaric part of you that just wants to see like a zombie like whip someone's face off but at the same time it's almost funny in a way evil dead is such a funny movie because a it's so fun to watch with friends of my friends slept over and me and my brother and him watched it. it was hilarious then uh over spring break this year i was hanging out at my old condos and a bunch of us a bunch of my friends got together and watched it, and it was hilarious. The funny thing about that movie is so... It is how strange the characters to react things. Blah. Okay, I b butchered that sentence. It's so how strange the characters react to things in the movie. Got it out. So, this girl, I forgot her name, I don't remember the name, so who gives a shit, goes into the woods for some reason, I forget why. A tree comes to life and rapes her, right? Literally. She flips out. They bring her back in the cabin. The next scene, they're sitting there playing poker. Like, huh? Like, what? Like, you... All this stuff happens to them, and they keep ignoring it. Like, their, their friend turned into a zombie in his underground, like, trying to get through and kill him, and they're just sitting there, like, drinking and, like, playing cards, like... What? The, it's so, it's just hilarious. Um, you know, the pencil in the ankle, all those funny scenes. The shut up, shut up. She's smacking her, she keeps laughing. And she, it's funny, dude. It's gory, but it's funny. And, of course, there's the big pop-up moments. It's just a, it's a good movie. I love that movie. It's, it's awesome. Um, so, yeah, Evil Dead, definitely. I'm gonna watch that again. Uh, okay. Next one comes from the, oh, thanks for the question, by the way, man. Appreciate it. Next comes from The Ascend. My man, The Ascend, is an awesome, 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 awesome guy. He comments on almost all my videos. He's a great guy. Love you, man. Thank you. And he asks... Uh, wow, I scrolled all the way up. That was stupid. All right. Uh, who are some of your favorite dramas or dramas that inspired you to play? So let's go to my music, because I know I'm going to forget some. I could say, like, ten of them off the bat, but I know I'll forget. So, <clears throat> Charlie Benante from Anthrax. Probably one of the greatest thrash dramas of all time. He's amazing. Uh... Uh, uh, Bill Ward, 
Bill Ward, you guys know how I feel about him. He's one of the most underrated draws of all time. He's a beast. He's amazing. He is everything I love about drummers. He mixes this kind of like jazzy, like finesse with like just beating the hell out of the you know the drums, and he he's just a very versatile player and he's underrated. He's groovy. He's so he he has like this swing to him. And, you know, combine it with Giza Butler and shit. You know, amazing rhythm section. So yeah, Bill Ward. Uh, Paul Whaley from Blue Cheer. Uh, Blue Cheer, one of my favorite bands. They're really really innovative and influential and awesome. And Paul Whaley, it, he, there's so many times when I watch him play, and of course, he, he, you know, Blue Cheer isn't like the most publicized band ever, but there was some pretty cool footage of them playing in the 60s, if you can find it, it's on YouTube. And um, when Paul Whaley plays drums, I, I mean, he, he... He hits them so hard, but with so much precision. Like, you watch him play, and he's just, like, going, going, his eyes are closed, he's probably on LSD, but, because it was the 60s, and they, you know, the two drugs, but he's sitting there playing, 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 just beating the hell out of him, and it makes drumming look so fun. There's so many times when I watch him, I'm like, oh, I gotta go, you know, play some drums now, because it, it, he's just so fun to look at, and it makes you want to play drums, you know, so Paul Whaley, awesome. He's just awesome, man. He's great. Uh, Paul Mazurkowitz from Cannibal Corpse really, really influenced my uh, death metal drumming just because I actually uh, got invited to join a death metal band. Um, my brother's going to be the singer, and my friend's the bassist, and my other friend's the guitarist, and then I'm meeting another guitarist, you know. Um, so I'm excited for that. Uh, Neff of the Bot is still going to be my, my number one band and stuff, but I'm looking forward to, you know, playing death metal. Um, I, I don't really have such a huge interest in playing it, but that might change when I actually start playing it. Um, so yeah, Paul Mazurkowitz. Ginger Baker from Cream. Um, come on. Come on. Ginger Baker is one of the most influential drummers of all time. There's so many different genres of music. Jazz, rock, which I know he would not want me to say he's a rock drummer, because he's really not. I mean, Cream, I never really looked at Cream as a rock band anyway. I don't really know what to categorize them, but Ginger Baker... He's a monster. He's so interesting. And does so many things that I never thought to do, you know. He, he's just so... He, like, he, he's like... This guy on a... If you haven't seen it, look up Cream Spoonful Live. They played three songs in 1968. I forget where it was. But it was just them playing in like, this palace-looking area. Not palace, but in this cool like, ballroom-looking place. It's pretty awesome. And Spoonful... Ginger Baker in that song, some guy in the top comment said, oh, Ginger's playing is an art, you know. And I, it's so true. I mean, his playing is just amazing. There's all these weird, like, like, he'll, like, just be doing a straight beat, and then just open the high and just go, give me the boom, ding, tsh. Like, it's just like, what? Like, he, he does so many things that I never would think to even do for a beat, but it just comes naturally to him. He's a beast. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, you know, fucking awesome. Uh, uh, let's see. uh Nick McBrain. Nick McBrain from Iron Maiden. Really taught me a lot about how to use the ride symbol. He like loves the fucking ride symbol. All the time, you know. Um, you know, kinda of taught me that style of, of, of drumming and more complex and I use it a lot. You can hear my drumming. I use that double tap wide kind of technique a lot. Um so Nick McLean's an awesome, awesome drummer. Uh John Bottom. Alright, next. Uh no I'm, I'm just kidding. Um I don't even need to say that much about John Bottom. He's John Bottom. Come on, he's sick. I mean that's it. I really don't have to put that much. Uh uh Dale Clover. Dale Clover is probably, in my opinion, one of the most underrated drummers of all time. The reason is because Dale Clover, I'm sorry, uh, woke up early this morning for band practice. Uh, uh Dale Clover, I'm sorry, Dale Clover is so unique. He does things that I never, ever, ever would think to do ever in drumming. Not, and it has nothing to do with experience or anything, it just has to do with 
what's going on in there? Like, d- d- Melvin's in general, oh, we're a band, we know that, right? But if you take a song like Vile, the beat to that song is like, the intro, which is feedback, and you just hear like, And it's like, he's like, he's not, it's like one really, really long fill. Like just like, boom, blah, tss, like I'm boss, the song boss off a of bullhead. Boom, blah, sh, boom, tss, blah, blah, do, do, ding, do, blah, blah, do, do, boom, sh, boom, sh, sh, boom, blah. Like, he, he just, like, like, just kind of, like, exploring his drum kit. And the only thing it could ever work with is Buzzo's riffs. And it's just so unique and weird, you know. He is just, he has a style completely his own. And there's no body who can play like him. I've never heard anybody play like him. Every song, even in Boss, the riff just goes And he he could have just went boom boom ba boom boom ba boom ba boom boom ba but instead he just decides to like just make it slow and lumbering and like he he's awesome there, Quover. He opened up my mind to so many different ways of 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 playing a song or where for it it I, I I just can't even explain how awesome of a drummer that guy is. Just amazing. I went on for like three minutes about that guy. Fucking sick. Uh uh I'd say Dave Gall, probably from Nirvana. Dave Gall he didn't I don't feel like he really influenced me in any way. But he's an amazing drummer, and I love him, and he, again, just makes drumming look so much fun. He's a beast. He's really, really precise, really driving, just just an awesome, awesome drummer. And I mean, it's no fun. Nirvana's awesome. Uh, Vinnie Paul from Pantera. Groovy as hell. Um, Just a really, really good drummer. One of my favorite musicians in that band. Um, Just awesome. Uh, Nick Mason. Nick Mason taught me that being minimalistic is a good thing sometimes. Now, of course, on the Floyd albums, his drumming isn't exactly exemplified. And by that, I mean, you listen to a song like, you know, Dogs or something, right, or for animals, and you're like, yeah, cool, okay. It's just kind of simple or whatever. But if you listen to him on, like, Pompeii, which is an amazing performance, one of my favorite performances of any band ever, um, he's an awesome drummer. It's just, he, it's not as exemplified on this Floyd Studio albums, but he's a great drummer, uses a lot of different techniques, you know, really, you know, mallets and all this kind of cool stuff. Really, really just a cool, cool drummer. You know, I just, I really like Nick Mason's style, he's a great drummer. And I... Use, I learn a lot from him, especially in the band I'm playing now. You know, so that's always good. Uh, Brad Wilk from Rage Against the Machine. Uh, again, groovy, hard hitting, just a really, really awesome drummer that inspired me when I was first getting in the drums. Uh, Dave Lombardo from Slayer. I mean, he just fast as hell. I'll never be as fast as him, you know, ever. Um, and uh, Chris Hakius, I believe it's pronounced, but from Sleep. Sleep is one of my all-time favorite bands, and he's just groovy and awesome. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, Stephen Jones from The Flaming Lips told me how to be a wheel drummer, kind of like Dale Cobra. Mitch Mitchell from The Jimi Hendrix Experience. Uh, Mitch Mitchell is an amazing... Wow, I'm taking so long to answer this question. I apologize. Wow, I just realized how long I'm taking. Mitch Mitchell, jazzy, way underrated, one of the most impressive drummers I've ever heard. Um... Fuck. Uh, and then, uh, 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 Jimmy Chamberlain from the Smashing Pumpkins. Just an awesome drummer. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. That took so long to answer. I apologize. Oh my god, I'm not even done with these questions. I'm sorry. Uh, what are some of your favorite covers, art-wise, album covers? Oh, okay, let's go. Anthrax, Among the Living, Spreading the Disease, State of Euphoria, really comic book-looking, awesome, cartoony, great. 
Um, Allison Chains, Dirt, awesome. Fits the album really well. Bad Brains, self-titled album. Black Flag, everything. Black Sabbath, Master of Reality, Paranoid, Volume 4, everything of the early era. Uh, Blue Cheers, first two albums, awesome album covers. Bolt Thrower, obviously, you know, um, um, Warhammer inspired, you know, war, like, fucking big dudes, just awesome, just badass, everything a teenage guy like me would like, right? Um, Cannibal Corpse, come on. Come on, come on, come on, Cannibal Corpse, that's all I gotta say. Uh, um, Death has some really cool album covers, Spiritual Healing and Lepsy, and, you know, the first three are my favorite. Uh, Electric Wizard, Come My Fanatics, and Dope Phone. Uh, uh, Fu Manchu has some cool ones, too. Uh, fuck. Um, In Search Of and, um, uh, um, The Action Is Go, really, really cool. Uh, Grateful Dead has some cool album covers. Um, I mean, I guess. Yeah, nah, I mean, Grateful Dead, it's more like the symbols that are cool, the bears and the, you know, the skull or whatever. Um, Hawkwind. Hawkwind have awesome album covers. Space Ritual. Space Ritual, uh, Warrior on the Edge of Time, you know, In Search of Space, Dawn May Fall, you know, whatever the hell that album is, you know, stuff like that. Um, uh, Incubus have some cool album covers, the first two albums I really like. Iron Maiden, that's it, all I gotta say, Eddie. Uh, Megadeth, obviously, because uh, Vic. Melvins, you know, just have the most unfitting album covers, that's what I love so much about them. You get this album like Bullhead, which is literally ready to crush your skull in, and has like a bowl of fruit on it. Come on, it's awesome. Uh, Metallica, Ride the Lightning Master, Puppets I really like. Um, uh, My Bloody Valentine's Loveless, really cool album cover, I love that. Uh, uh, Neutral Milk Hotel, some really cool album covers, just the only two albums to have. Nirvana, I like the album covers. Uh, Pantera, you can punch in the face and like drills through skulls, they're just so metal. No, come on. Um, Pink Floyd. I really like some Pink Floyd album covers. Metal is really cool. Dark Side, obviously. Wish You Were Here, the dude shaking the guy's hand. Awesome. All the album covers. Um, St. Vitus have some really cool album covers. Mourn Phil Cries, Born Too Late. Uh, Slayer, obviously. Wayne and Blood, Hell of Bates, Sound of Heaven, all that good shit. Um, Sleep. I love the Holy Mountain album cover, and I love the, like, eight dope smoker covers that they have, because they've released so many goddamn hands. Uh, I like Sound Gone album covers a lot. I love Louder Than Love, Bare Mortal Finger, and Super Unknown. Um, Flaming Lips have really great album covers. Uh, Smash Pumpkins have cool album covers. And yeah, that's it. I love how an, an, an album artwork can kind of summarize a, um, an album like Loveless. Tell me that the album cover to Loveless doesn't describe the sound of that album really, really well. You know, it does. Um, Pantel with the dude getting punched in the face. I get all it's, it's, it's awesome, you know. Um, so, next. Do you think there's other life out there beyond Earth? Yeah, uh, I was talking to my aunt about this the other day. Um, really, like, we're the only people in the galaxy, which we don't even know that much about because it's infinite. Uh, that's life. That's it. Only this one tiny planet that we call Earth in this huge, expansive N never ending exist like you you tell me that we are the only ones on earth what did we do right you know what i mean what did, what did what's so special about earth that we're the only planet in infinity that can have life it just seems really weird to me um and i also don't think that it's aliens in particular either maybe it's just some other form of of life whether it be like a like a cell like crawling on the planet's surface or like Cycle, you know, whatever. It could be anything, honestly, because we don't know shit. Uh, we know, like, this much about space. All we know is just the solar system and some other stuff. We really don't know that much. And I'm a huge fan of astrology. I'm really interested in space and planets and stuff like that. So, that's why I love bands like Hawkland and shit. But, um, yeah, I, I find it hard to believe, to be honest. So, I think I think there definitely is life. Um, thank you. The Ascend, you're awesome. Uh, Des Cadena. That's an awesome username. Uh, what do you think of Pish Jeans? Uh, they're pretty cool. I only heard a little bit of the album. I think it's called Hope for Men. Um, it's pretty cool. Very raw, grungy. Not grung, you know what I mean. Not the genre because it doesn't exist, but just, you know, whatever. Um, kind of sleazy, aggressive, punky, loud, noisy rock. It's pretty cool. I like this singer. Drums sound cool. Good shit. I, I like it a lot. Thanks for the question, man. 
Uh, where are you from? What do you do when you grow up? And give me a shout out. Well, I'll do the shout out first. Brendan Dyer. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, I hope I'm right, dude. Sorry if it's not. Uh, where are you from? Uh, Connecticut. So I'm gonna really tell anybody. Uh, I. I'm guessing people ask that because of my accent, and I get a lot of shit from my accent. Not a lot of shit, like bad, but just a lot of comments. Um, my dad's from the Bronx, so I think I get it from him. Uh, which is weird, because he doesn't even have an accent anymore, but, yeah. Uh, what do you want to do when you grow up? Be a musician. Either be a musician, or do something that has to do with music. Whether it be, you know, a studio musician or just, you know, playing. I don't want to be, like, famous or anything, you know. I really don't. I just want to make a living playing music. Whether that means barely making a living, I think I'd take it. As long as I had food to eat and I could just, like, play shows, I think I would do it. But, again, I'm only 17, so who knows? That may all change. Uh, you know, I'm open to that, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks, man. I appreciate the questions. Uh, this question, or multiple questions comes from X Zero E Z X. Right. And he asks, uh, what are your favorite death metal bands and what makes them stand out to you? What are some of your favorite places to listen to as atmosphere types of metal? Uh, or just metal in general? Who who influences slash inspires you most in your drumming? What are some of your favorite recent albums and what new releases are you looking forward to in the future? That was a mouthful, but hey, you asked for a lot of questions. I did. Now, I'm not going to answer one of your questions because I kind of just did. Who were the drummers that inspired you and influenced you? Hopefully what I just said and I spent like five minutes on, hopefully that answered your question enough. I hope it did. Um, And, okay. What are your favorite death metal bands and what makes them stand out to you? So, I know I'm not going to forget them, but just in case, I'm going to go to my music. Okay. Okay. Uh, Autopsy. Autopsy... Or filthy, disgusting, gross, everything I think of when I think of what good death metal is, they are. But at the same time, they're really unique. They have a, a unique sound, they're doomy. Their lyrics are horrifying. And the, the sound of it exemplifies that because anyone can just go... And just, you know, whatever, everyone can do that. But to me, true brutality is like autopsy. I mean, there's a song called Death Twitch... There's a solo in that song that sounds so sad, so tragic, and it just makes you feel really like, oh my god, it makes you feel really uncomfortable, and it's awesome. And plus, the uh, singer, I didn't forget his name. Chris Weefoot, there we go, Chris Weefoot, uh, <laughs> good, I remember, uh, is like, he said his goal is to write the most sickest shit imaginable, and he does that more, like, he's more than capable of doing that, and, um, he also plays drums, <sighs> so that's really, really awesome, drum or singer, um, whoops, uh, <laughs> uh, what else we got here, Cannibal Corpse. Even Back to Life was my first my first death metal album, so maybe I'm biased. I gotta say, in my opinion, Chris Bond albums, you know, the first three, I love Corpse Gone Up too. But Eating Back to Life, Butcher to Birth, and Tomb of the Mutilated, that equals old school death metal to me. That to me is what old school death metal is about. The lyrics. Yeah, some people don't like them. They are gross, but I mean, again, it's death metal. What do you want? The vocal style. The guitar playing, the album cover, just the attitude, all of it represents what I think of when I think old school death metal. Automatically, Cannibal Corpse comes up in my mind, you know. They they just they introduced me to what death metal was, you know, and they just kind of took me by the hand into the genre and threw me into a big bucket of blood and shit. So yeah, totally, totally, Cannibal Corpse one of the best. No matter what people say about him nowadays. Death, I mean, come on, they got me into more experimental styles, you know, more progressive, 
Chuck is an amazing, talented musician, great guitar player, great lyrics. They really, really got me into a lot of different lyrics other than like stab, 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 cut, kill, whatever. Um, Satan, you know, whatever they, you know, I'm talking about. So yeah, death. I mean, just they, they, they give death metal class, you know. Uh, Deicide. My brother got me into these guys. Deicide, I really like Deicide. Uh, the lyrics are obviously something that a lot of people know, they're extremely satanic. I gotta be honest, I know this is gonna, like, upset a lot of people. I think Glenn Benton's sort of a bullshitter. I just think he's kind of like a joke. But I still really, really like DSI. I love the high pitch, low pitch thing, and they just have a really unique sound. Um. Uh, fuck. Sorry, guys. Oh, shit, I forgot. Um. Bolt Thrower. Bolt Thrower, uh. Awesome. Uh, the first time I got by them was Realms of Chaos, or Realm of Chaos. I think it's Realms of Chaos. They mix this, like, grind... And the thing I love about them is how they their, their music is... I have a view two of the albums, one with my brother and then another one just by myself. Their music is the equivalent of war, literally, because that's what they sing about. The production, the vocal style, the drumming. Literally, it feels like you're in the middle of a war, and it's... So fucking awesome. It's like atmospheric in that way. It makes you feel like you're in the middle of like this battle, you know. Double bass sounds like bullets in the background. The the the, the, the riffs just sound like a tank like rolling over just rocks. Like it's it's just so cool how they inject the lyricism in the in the music. Doomy, slow, just oh they have such a unique sound, both of all. I love them, they're awesome. So uh, cancer, oh, really, really cool. I like cancer very much. Um, I think that's it. Uh, obituary, really, really unique. Great, amazing, cool vocals. Awesome, very sick sounding. And that's all she wrote. So, yeah. Uh, what are some of your favorite places to listen to atmospheric metal? Um, pretty much. Anywhere, really. It doesn't matter. I mean, I guess by atmospheric metal, you can mean stoner metal and doom metal, too. And that, you know, definitely, I don't really have a place I like to listen to certain metal. I have a place I like to listen to certain music, but not certain metal. Um. So, yeah, I mean, it kind of depends more on the mood I'm in rather than the place. But it's fully a unique question, though, so thanks. Um, and what are some of the recent albums, and what albums are you looking forward to? Well... Uh, me and my friend are pretty hyped about the new Pearl Jam album. I haven't really heard anything after Viruses, although yesterday I actually went to uh, uh, my school's football game, which I don't really care about football, but I just went because my friend was going and he invited me and we had a good time. Uh, and I, I, my friend is like one of those friends who, like, he we've never really liked the same music, but, like, he's become a huge Pearl Jam fan. Pearl, Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam fan. And it was so cool to see him, like, we popped in 10, and to see us, like, jam into, like, a live and stuff, it was so cool. Because he's just not in the same type of music I am. Uh, so that was really cool. And we're both pretty hyped for the new Pearl Jam record. Um, I don't really know what it's going to sound like, but I'm, you know, I'm excited. And recent albums, not a lot. I mean, none, pretty much. Uh, I don't know, I just haven't really listened to anything all that recent. Uh, and that's it, so thank you very much, man. I appreciate the big, lengthy, nice amount of questions, and just thanks, thanks very much. Okay, getting down to the last two. This comes from Matt Ostendorf, I hope I pronounced that right, dude, I'm sorry if I didn't. And what bands or artists do you like that people may not have guessed you do? Uh, Vava Shankar got me into Indian music, and I really, really like Vava Shankar. You know, you guys, there's really nothing so surprising, I think, to you guys, because you guys see all my musical taste. Come in. What's up? Oh, I'm doing a video. No, it's cool. What's up? Hi, this is my dad. <laughs> um, mommy said she's on her way. Okay, I got you. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. No, that's cool. That's my dad, everybody. My dad. Everyone clap at your computers. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, you guys pretty much know all the type of music that I listen to. Um, so I don't think anything will really surprise you, but as far as bands that I'm... You know, people may not have guessed... Vava Shankar, I really am in Indian music, and you guys 
uh, you might, may have been surprised by that, I guess. But it's more about other people who know me who just assume that all I listen to is metal. That, you know, I listen to, like, the Sundays, a lot of dream pop bands, and, and you know, bands that, like, girl singers and, like, kind of... Not prissy lyrics, because that has, like, a negative connotation, but, like, kind of... I don't know how to ex describe it. Very, um... Uh... Soft lyrics, I guess if you want to say. I really love dreamy bands like that, the Verve, you know, My Bloody Valentine, and stuff like that. Um, and I listen to like a lot of older music, like blues and stuff like that. And again, you guys know all this, but the people who know me just assume I listen to like really angry, aggressive music, which I do. But I also like, you know, other stuff, obviously. So, uh, thanks for the question, man. And uh, last question comes from Peter Wan, and this one is really funny. Peter Wan's a really cool subscriber of mine. He is uh, a Canadian uh, guy, and he uh, he asks. He always shares Canadian bands with me and always says, oh, you should listen to this band, you should listen to that band. And, um, <clears throat> he asks, did you ever listen to those Canadian bands I graciously shared with you? And yes, dude, I did. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of that many of them, but I definitely enjoyed them and I respected a lot of them. Um, and that pretty much ends it on a pretty funny note. So, uh, thank you all for the questions. I appreciate it very much. This video was long. It's like 40 minutes, but I had a lot to say. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we should do this again. Maybe when I hit like one, maybe 200 subscribers, 230 subscribers, whatever. Uh, thanks. I've wasted enough of your time. It's 41 minutes. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Oh, and the Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath review is coming soon. Probably in like a day or two. Thanks.